Hello there. Welcome to Faith Matters. Great to have you with us. It is another glorious time, Jen, and we're going to have some fun from the Word of God today, aren't we? Yes, we are. And again, thank you so much for the response that you have been giving us. The emails just keep rolling in, and we're so excited to know that you are literally taking the Word of God for yourselves. And because of that, you will see how you will begin to walk in the abundant blessing that Jesus has promised us just because He his word is true and he has promised to honor his word concerning us. So welcome to Faith Matters. That's right. You know, Jen, you said the emails are rolling in. They sure are rolling in. Listen, keep those emails coming to us. FM at myfaithtv.com. One more time, FM at myfaithtv.com. What we're going to do this particular program, Jen, is we are going to dedicate the whole program to many of the questions and uh, many of the emails that have come in. And I, I want to tell you, it is overwhelming sometimes the response of emails. But you know what? Each and every one we look at personally. We respond to you personally. And even although it, it's uh, quite vast in numbers, I want you to be assured that we read every single one and we respond to you directly. Isn't that true, Jim? It is true. And again, thank you so much for your patience because sometimes it takes hours just to get through the you know the load that comes in but we do we respond to every single one of them but sometimes we find that there's almost a repetition in the type of questions on that's so right we found it really really important to be able to pick out or select certain of the emails and to actually over air discuss those questions with you and show you God's point of view from the Word of God concerning them and I believe that as we do that we will be answering a whole lot of your questions together in one go so if even though you will be receiving personal emails from us concerning your questions, we're going to take some programs as well and dedicate them towards answering the questions that the majority, well, many have been asking. All right. So what we're going to do today is spend some time just on your questions. All you need to do is send them to us right now, fm at myfaithtv.com, fm at myfaithtv.com. Dot com. Those details are on your screen. So stay with us. It's going to be great. We're going to have a lot of fun today. We're going to get into the Word of God as yes. we answer many of those questions. A little bit of a different program, but we wanted to do this because we value each and every one of those amazing questions that come in right here into Faith Matters. We're going to be right back to get into the questions today. Here we are, Jen. We are all systems go. That's right. All right. And we're going to get going right now. You, you know, we, we want to talk about a few different things today. Just a little bit of a different program. We're going to get on with teaching as the, as the weeks unfold going forward. But we wanted to spend some time with you in your home as if you asked this question directly to us. And I think that's what people need to understand about the emails. The emails are something that we are doing on a private one-to-one -one basis with you sitting in your living room. We want you to feel at home. We want you to enjoy these 30 minutes with us as we just go on and answer each and every one of those questions. So Jen, let's look at uh, a question that we've selected which has been asked a number of different ways, uh, but we've summed this question up and we, we're, gonna, we're putting it in words as follows. With so many churches and different doctrines, how will I know this is the true church or the true gathering or the true place of worship where I need to be? Help me understand the Bible. Right. Now that question could be Huge. asked from, it's a big question. It's been asked to us numerous times and, and, uh, and I want you to understand what people are saying out there. They, they're basically saying, how do I choose the right church? How do I choose the truth? How do I make sure I'm going? Because we keep saying, go to a Bible believing church. Yes. Go to a church that is preaching the word of God. Yes. 
All right, this is what we've kept saying. And so many people have asked us this same question in a number of different ways. And so I, I want to answer that question with you right now. We're going to talk a little bit about it from the Word of God. And uh, I want you to get your pen and notebook out and I want you to record the scriptures we're going to give you. We're going to give you some, some insight. And again, we're wanting to help you make sure you have made the right decision on the place where you need to go. Right, and you know why I think this is so important, Andre, because the Word of God speaks very clearly that we have to grow and mature in God That's and right. grow and mature in our walk of faith with God because we do have an enemy, the devil, who will do everything in his power to, to kind of uproot you or to steal away your faith from you. Mm. And if you are not grounded in the truth of God's Word and you are not confident in what His will is concerning you, the devil will talk you out of your blessing. Right. He'll talk you out of anything that God has for you because you have not secured in your mind and your heart the truth of what God's will is for you. And yes, it's important. I mean, Paul again and again speaks about how we need to mature in God. We need to grow up. We need to train our very senses, our spiritual senses right. to know and discern what is right, what is wrong, what is the will of God, what is not the will of God. Or, in fact, right throughout the New Testament, there are teachings to show us that we have to become uh, children of God that are able to discern properly. We must be able to know when you hear the message being taught, understand that it isn't always going to be God's Word or based on the truth of God's Word. There are so many people out there that will lead you astray. People that you think know God's Word, but you can see by their fruit that obviously they don't or they're not living in the fullness of God. But nonetheless, you have to wise up because the bottom line is you are responsible for what you live. So if you are going to learn how to hear and understand and know what is God's word, you'll begin to walk in the blessing of it. But if you are not diligent enough to train yourself up in the truth of God, God's word yourself, then you are the only one responsible for following after the ways that are not His. Mm. So we need to wise up and grow up in God and grow up in the word and find out for ourselves what is true and what is not true. That's, that's so right, Jen. You, you know, let, let's talk about this. Again, the question is, how do I know what is the right church for me? How do I know there's so many different doctrines, so many different uh, ministries out there, and how do I really know and believe this is the right one for me? Let me, let me start by saying this. I feel, Jen, the one question we need to always ask ourselves is the church winning the lost? This is one of the key ingredients. And now we're going to get into scripture and we're going to talk about a few different elements. But, but I've always come to realize if a church is not growing by winning the lost, a church is a dying church. Right. All right. In other words, the church has become stagnant. Now, when you are winning the lost, in other words, inviting people to get to know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior in a public environment. I want you to understand this. This is one of the keys for you because if anybody is winning the lost, already that is a church that is growing. That is a church that is moving forward. So that is one of the little keys. And we're going to talk about a few of them today. I like the key, and I think we need to speak about that mm. a bit as well. You know, the Spirit of God, where there's the Spirit of God, there is life. That's right. And if you are in a church, or a church is full of the life of God, then it is impossible for them not to be able to have that life go out and bring in others. You can't be full of the Spirit of God and not be passionate about souls. In fact, everywhere you go, you become a testimony of His goodness. That's right. And just by your friendship, you know, just, just by being out in the world and, and living amongst other people, there is a light that is shining out of you that attracts people to you. That they'll begin to say, what do you have that I don't have? Who do you know? What are you believing in? Or what is going on in your life? We're going through the same circumstances, but you always have a joy. You always have a peace. Mm. There's always a wisdom 
wisdom or a calmness? What do you have? How do you get that? Do you know those little things? It's the life of God that is shining out of you that automatically will be a beacon to the dark world. That's what the word says. That's right. So if you're the church that you are belonging to is being a beacon and has, is filled with the life of God himself, it will automatically, automatically have a pull on the world, a pull on the people that are lost, bringing them to want to know more about Jesus. Mm. You know, I've, I've always seen this as we've traveled and where we've gone, Jen. When there is a church that is preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, winning the lost, there is life. And you might be stuck in a church that has got stagnant. You might be stuck in a place that uh, the pastor never ever gets up and does what we call is an altar call, uh, an invitation. An invitation. It, it's, it's, it's said in many different ways, but it could be an invitation for people to say, if you want to get to know Jesus, this is how. You need to understand that is a key of a healthy church. Yes. All right, tradition and religion stop us. Because you, the people say, the pastors say, well, we'll offend people. Correct. Good heavens, what is the gospel about? What are we here for? Jesus said we are to go into all the world and win the lost, That's make right. disciples. We are here to draw people to Jesus. And if we too afraid to do that in a house of God, Oh my goodness, what have we reduced our faith walk to? That's right, and that's the problem. That's the problem. You know, if we're going to abide by the Word of God as our foundation to answer this question, understand the key to all of this is the obedience to the Word of God. And what does Jesus say when He left earth? He said, go and make disciples. Mm -hmm. And then He says, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy, and the Holy Spirit. Yes. All right, I want you to understand that water baptism plays a vital role in the, the, the individual's life maturing into a full believer. Now, I understand water baptism is not getting you saved. You get saved by the knowledge of the Word of God and choosing to believe Jesus Christ has risen from the dead and lives inside of you. It's a decision that you make. You believe it by faith and then you have to obey the Lord through the waters of baptism and into all that God has for you. So we start to see certain things uh, come into line and then we understand that you need to be in an alive church that is on fire. You need to be in a place where uh, the Holy Spirit is free. is free and is accepted and is welcomed. All right. Now, there are many different manifestations of the Holy Spirit and, and we can spend a good few hours talking about those. But, but, but let's just leave it at this for now on the Holy Spirit. The key here, Jen, is an openness to allow the Holy Spirit to move. Mm. Now, there might be some churches where uh, tongues is spoken. There might be other churches where uh, you might sing and worship Him in the Spirit. There might be operating of the gifts. Uh, there's the operation of the gifts of the Holy Spirit in play. But the key here is never to quench the Holy Spirit. In other words, allow a freedom in worship. Allow a time in His presence. Uh, allow Him to move. Don't, don't ever be in a place that is such uh, putting restrictions on you that everything has to be done in a sequence and there's no freedom of the Holy Spirit. So what are, we, what are we saying by all of these things? And then we're going to get into the scripture here in a moment. We're saying, number one, is my church growing? Is the place where I am going Am I seen Sunday after Sunday? And maybe it's not every Sunday, but definitely at least a certain Sunday in the month or two Sundays in the month, I need to make sure I'm looking are souls being won mm -hmm. in the kingdom? Is an invitation being given out? Let me speak to you as a pastor right now. I was speaking to a pastor friend of mine just recently and uh, we were on a long international phone call and he was in another country. And uh, he said to me, he said, Andre, I'm, I'm just battling. It feels like my church is stagnating. And you know what? He's a great man of God, a great friend of mine. And I, and I just felt the Spirit of God urge me in this, Jen. And I spoke to him by his name and I said, listen, are you winning souls? 
Are you throwing in the net? Are you giving people an opportunity to win the lost each and every Sunday? Are you giving God an opportunity to move in your services? And you know what? It got very quiet on the other side of the phone to me. And he said, Andre, I have not been. I definitely realized this is an area. And God just began to speak to him. And I said to him, my friend, you need to every Sunday, even if no one comes to the altar, even if no one makes a decision to make Jesus Lord and Savior of their life, you need to make sure every Sunday you are at least giving an opportunity. And then I said, encourage your congregation to begin to bring the lost because a healthy church is a church where people are getting saved and set free. And you know what? We hung up the phone. He phoned me about three months later. And he said to me, I just want to thank you. He began to weep on the phone. He said, I, I just want to thank you. Something has changed in my ministry. Mm -hmm. He said, there is life. There is an excitement. Everybody is bringing people every Sunday. He said, every Sunday, I am telling people about Jesus. I'm giving them an opportunity and I am winning the lost every Sunday. And he said, do you want to know something? He said, my finances have increased. My numbers Thank have God. increased. Thank my worship is better than it's ever been. Why? Because the church is alive, Jen. The That's the key. God. That's Got the, the heart key. of God. That is so exciting. And it's true. Um, so I think we've covered pretty much as far as a church is concerned. How do I know if this is a church um, that is good, that is, is, you know, showing the way. But as we spoke, it has to have the life of God. The Word of God has to be preached. And there must be the freedom of the Holy Spirit to move in the hearts and the lives of people. Otherwise, it becomes more of a swamp than a flowing river of life to others. Yeah. But the other question that we see that comes out of this question is in our personal lives, how do we know in our personal lives if we're following after the right doctrine? If we hear a word and we, we kind of line our lives up with what was being preached or something we hear, I mean, Andre, really, today's life, we hear messages through Instagram, we see it on television, every different way, there's different messages coming. How do we know which one is from God, which isn't so many seem to be contradicting? Mm. You know, what? how do I know which is the right way? And I believe that's where we need to understand that we have the Holy Spirit. That's right. Every born again child of God has the Spirit of God living inside of them. Mm. First Corinthians 6 verse 17 says, but the person who is united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. You have the Holy Spirit in you and he will bear witness with what you hear or you will feel in your heart, this is not the truth. That's and right. you have the word of That's God. Right. Go check it out in the word of God to see if what is being taught is accuracy. Now, very often, even the devil knows the word. I mean, we know that right. and he can quote scriptures or have uh, scriptures in there, but they are out of context. Mm. You know, it's, it's amazing how many people can just open the word and take any scripture and make it work for whatever they want it to work. We find scriptures for anything that we want, <laughs> almost as though we manipulate in the word to help us get the things that we desire. But when you take the word of God in context, mm. there is always going to be a promise or a truth that you can follow, apply to your life and follow to live in the blessing that God has for you. That's right. So in John chapter 16, verse 7, it says that the Holy Spirit will come to have close fellowship with us. Listen to what it says. It says the spirit of truth will guide you into all truth, the whole full truth. For he will not speak his own message or on his own authority, but he will tell whatever he hears from the Father. He will give the message that has been given to him by the Father, and he will announce and declare to you the things that are to come that will happen in the future. He will honor and glorify me, Jesus said, because he will take of, receive and draw upon what is mine and will reveal, declare, disclose and transmit it to you. That's the Amplified Bible. Jen, you know, the thing that jumps out over here that I want us to understand, you now in a church, mm -hmm. a Bible believing church, a great ministry, souls are being one and suddenly things don't feel the same suddenly the message begins to be distorted. All right, I want you to understand when the Word of God comes across in and through ministries, it needs to be 
the whole truth. As soon as, and this is where many churches fail, and this is what we see across the world today, many churches will, if I can use the word, specialize. Just as an example, it's, it's a word where they become very focused on only one element or one aspect, or one right. aspect right. of the truth. Mm -hmm. That is a danger sign. All right, as a church, what does the body mean? What is a church? We have to be somebody as a pastor, as a minister that preaches the whole truth. We have to teach pertaining to healing. We have to teach pertaining to worship, prayer, uh, um, uh, grace, all faith, the foundations. all the different foundations. What is salvation? All of these things. In other words, everything needs to be taught. The whole Word of God needs to be taught in totality, not just one segment. Now, here's the thing. As soon as someone says, I have a new revelation, or as soon as someone says, I have the only revelation that no one else has, these are warning bells for you. These need to be signs, and, and, and believe me, it's true. Men of God will be swayed in the last days according to the Word of God. Uh, doctrines will come into their minds that are not good, godly doctrines. These are things that distract them and then that's all they begin to teach. That's all they begin to move people in a particular direction. And many times they are end time doctrines. Listen, stay away from the end time doctrines and focus on the fullness of who God is. Because the end times, I understand, there are great things that are going to be happening in the end times, but the ministry must not be focused all on one element. And as you begin to sit there and something, Jen, doesn't fit right with you, that's when you need to have the scripture and say, Lord, is this the whole truth or is it not? It's a very important thing. Colossians 3.15 says these words, And let the peace the soul harmony which comes from Christ rule, act and umpire continually. continually yes. There's the key. When you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, He is your umpire. Don't sit in a place that your umpire is telling you something's wrong here. Now, I need to just put this word of caution out. Don't run from a place when the Spirit of God is convicting you and challenging you and stirring your heart to deal with an issue of sin in your life. Mm -hmm. Because many times people want to use this scripture to run away. And they, they don't realize the discomfort they're feeling is, is because they're out of line. God is dealing with something yeah, in their own heart. Yeah, so it's, it's a very important thing. You need to understand the umpire inside. All you got to do is say, go before God, say, God, are you dealing with this in my life? And if he says, yes, deal with it. Allow God to, to grow you. Allow God to change you. And then he says, uh, and, and then he says, the umpire continually in your hearts deciding and settling with finality all questions that arise in your minds in that peaceful state. The, the umpire is peace. Mm. The word of God needs to be the peace in every area of your life to which as members of Christ, one body, you are also called to live and be thankful, appreciative, giving praise to God always. Mm. So what do I need to know? The umpire needs to be operating in my life. I know that Jerry Savelle speaks about the same type of thing, understanding if you are if you are in line with God's word, if this is where God what God wants for you. First of all, you need to understand is it from the truth of God's word? That's right. Uh, number two, does it make him famous? Does yeah. it lift the name of Jesus up? Number three, when you follow that word, does it make you feel free? Does it because it's the mm. word that makes you free? In other words, do I need to sort something out so that I can walk in a new freedom with God? Is it leading me to a place of freedom in God and That's that right. is really really important you can use that as very very important steps is it from the Word of God does it make Jesus lift him high and does it bring you into a freedom in God That's when right. when you can tick all those boxes and you know
know that umpire inside of you, there is peace inside of you, and you can move on with God in that word, then by all means do that. That's right. The Bible says there is no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. Never ever feel condemned. Never ever feel pressurized. Never ever feel manipulated. But say, Holy Spirit, if I'm wrong, convict me. If show there's me. something I need to change and I'm in this church, Lord, just show me I want to change. I want to be open to your leading and guiding. But Holy Spirit, show me if this church is not the place where I need to be. Show me, show where, me where I need to go. But remember this, you need to be in fellowship. It is critical. You need to be in a house of God. You need to be tithing. You need to be sowing. You need to be giving into that house. Serving. Those are all biblical things. And you need to serve in a local body. Get involved because many of you aren't growing because you're not involved. You're not an usher. You're not a, a hostess. You, you, you're not helping help in it. the children's ministry. You, you're not doing something in the ministry. Do something and watch how your life will change. I trust you've been blessed. Listen, mm -hmm. if you, we've, we're answering one big question here today. I need you to get your questions to us. FM at MyFaithTV.com. FM at MyFaithTV.com stands for Faith Matters because we want the truth. We want the revelation of God to touch your heart, stir your heart. And you know what? You're going to walk in divine favor. You're going to walk in blessing, Jen, like Amen. never before. Amen. And that's what this program is geared for. So be blessed as, as you face whatever is stirring in your heart, as you as you challenged in this particular field and whatever God's saying to you, be obedient, but grow. Yes. We want you to grow more than ever mm -hmm. in the Word of God. Because the faithful will flourish. That's right. Faith matters. All right. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Get those questions to us. We want to hear from you. From the Faith Matters studio, God bless you and Shalom. Thank you.